Hello people of the future and welcome to Let's Make a Trading Card Game. I've got a lot of updates for you today, so let's jump right in. First of all, I want to show you this program, which is uh, called Octagon. And this is where we've been testing multiverse for the past two months. It's a virtual tabletop simulator and it allows you to play all sorts of different games with people around the world. Now remember how clunky our previous test sessions were, where you had to print out the physical cards and then cut them out and make some decks. Uh, and remember how you were only um, restricted to one or two colors maximum. So all of this is in the past. And once you've downloaded Octagon, first of all, the thing, the first thing that it does is it it updates uh, the game. It checks for updates if, if there are any in the card set. So you will always have the newest version of the card set. Uh, then another huge uh, important thing is that uh, you have access to the entire collection of cards, no more restrictions, um, and uh, you'll be able to build all sorts of different decks uh, with all sorts of different strategy. In fact, let's go to the uh, deck builder. This is the deck builder, and since the last episode we've had the, the chance to playtest a lot internally online, and the gameplay has improved a lot. Uh, there were two main changes that were to the cargo and the shields abilities. Um, otherwise, uh, there were some changes to individual cards, but mostly uh, the rules haven't changed. It's just these two abilities that are now scalable. So they're not cargo X and uh, shields X, instead of just cargo and shields. Um, yeah, so let's start with cargo. Let's explain a bit what, what has changed. Cargo used to be a ship ability and it simply said that uh, you could put resources on the ship and uh, when the ship moved around, uh, the resource would move with it so you could uh, transport it from one uh, of your bases to another and you could pay that resource to play actions and reactions. Okay, so the main problem with that uh, is that uh, if you're using a ship mainly for transporting purposes, there really isn't much of an upside to choose a more expensive ship or a, over a cheaper one because both can carry any amount of resource, so naturally you would want the cheapest cargo ship you, you can get. So that was a problem, and now that cargo is scalable, uh, a ship can have cargo 2 and be able to uh, transport only 2 resources, or cargo 3 or 4 or 5, and uh, this change alone already adds a lot of variety to the ability and makes more expensive cargo ships more useful, because now they can carry more resource and there's more um, variety that way. Uh, this change also allowed us to put cargo on units as well. You can see here uh, a few w uh, units with cargo. So now if a unit has cargo 1, it can carry one resource with it wherever it goes. It can even bring the unit of resource into a ship that doesn't have the cargo ability. So that's a little bit of a contradiction and a bit illogical uh, and inconsistent, but the amount of depth of gameplay that this little change brings uh, counteracts uh, uh, that small uh, logic inconsistency. Uh, in fact, um, the reason this adds to the gameplay so much is because uh, with units being able to carry our, our own resource, there's more resource going around. <laughs> That's a bit of a tautology. Um, and with more resource going around the galaxy, there are more moments where you can play actions and reactions and there's more interactions with your opponent. Uh, because usually you only have resource on your planets, uh, so you can only play things there, but if there's more resource out there in space, and uh, there's a bigger chance that uh, uh, you'll be able to have more effective plays with actions and reactions. Reactions especially suffered from being somewhat situational, because they usually affect just the space they're played on, or like spaces in range 1 usually. Uh, so this change uh, fixes that and, and diminishes that problem a lot. The other ability we changed was shields. Uh, now it's also a scalable ability, so it's shields 1, 2, 3, etc. Uh, the previous version said that when a card with shields was played, you put a shield counter on it, and the next time that that card would be dealt any amount of damage, you instead prevent the damage and take away the shield counter. So basically the ability worked as a one-time protection, and it didn't care how much damage was dealt to the object. Uh, it could be 1 or 2 or 10, it didn't matter. So there were a couple of things that I didn't like with this version of shields. Uh, usually in science fiction when a spaceship has shields, they're a constant barrier that uh, protects somewhat from the attacks of uh, opponent's ships. Um, and uh, sure, it can be penetrated, it can be broken through, but it still 
it's still there. It's not like it protects once and it dissipates forever. Uh, unless, you know, a shield generator is damaged or the power is diverted to another part of the ship or something like that. Um, so I didn't like how our version worked uh, because, yeah, it protected against any amount of damage on one hand and uh, on the other hand it protected, it could be uh, destroyed with just one damage and I, I didn't like that at all. So now the way the shields work is that uh, it prevents the first X damage dealt to the object with shields each turn. So if uh, a ship has shields too, um, the first two damage each turn is prevented. And if more damage is dealt on the same turn, then the rest is dealt normally. Um, this, again, adds a lot of variety, like with the cargo ability. You can have weaker and stronger shields. Uh, also, the protection is constant, uh, but at the same time, uh, it still can be penetrated and uh, the ship can still be damaged. So these are the two main changes with the game. Other than that, we've been mostly tweaking cards, fixing overpowered cards, making more useful variants of niche and uh, less useful cards, uh, just generally tightening things up and balancing things out. Uh, also, uh, yeah, we've tightened up all the ability of the six colors. Every color now has their own defined strategies with pros and cons, which I like. Plus, uh, most of the two color pairs also have overlapping strategies. Uh, and uh, another thing we've done is that we've added names to cards, as you can see. So uh, there's no uh, big giant card name on the card when it references itself, which was a bit annoying. Also, we've added images to all the galaxy cards in Octagon, so you can see them here, all the planets. Look gorgeous. And uh, yeah, uh, the other, the nebula, asteroid field, and empty space. So, to start playing the beta version of Multiverse Cosmic Conquest, uh, you have to be a member of the Tokars community. So, if you haven't already, uh, sign up to our website and then uh, click here and fill a small form. And we'll send you all the details on how to set up Octagon. I won't do it in this video, it will be a bit too long. Anyway, once you've become a member, and you've downloaded Octagon, you can play the beta version of the game. Uh, you can go ahead and build any kind of deck you want and play with other people that will be online, even with me. So this is how you'll be able to play Multiverse for now until we release our own program or the physical version of the game. Um, Octagon doesn't keep track of the rules, it's a simulator of a table basically, so you'll have to learn the rules. Um, we have the updated rulebook in our forums here. And uh, you can play normally, but if you'd like to help out Multiverse further by giving feedback, we encourage you do so in the tester forums. Any issues, suggestions, comments or questions you might have about anything, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, and every time you post a useful comment or help out someone else in the tester forums, your tester points will go up. Uh, I've talked about the tester points in uh, the testing announcement. They're, they're all still valid. So with the structure of the game already in place, we started working on world building. I've started drawing concept art for the main races uh, in the game. Some are pretty obvious, like humans, cyborgs and robots, they are self-explanatory. Others are based on uh, classic science fiction tropes, so we have a big-headed, big-eyed, frail alien that uh, stereotypical, you know, um, little grey, I think it's called. Um, that, uh, you know, those are the ones that abduct people and do experiments on them. We also have aliens made of rock. Uh, we want uh, a reptile race and we want to design an insect race, although we don't have one right now. Uh, slime. And I've been designing some new original designs, like the Darrens here, which are sort of half octopus, half uh, bird. <laughs> and the Cochlea, or Cochlea, maybe Cochlea, uh, which is... Uh, half a snail and half a turtle, something like that. Just to give Multiverse its own original aliens and its own feel, uh, so it doesn't look like uh, it's completely unoriginal. We need our own flair. But we also want some things that are recognizable and that people love. Anyway, there's a lot of work to do in this front. I have to finish designing all the races, but then there's clothing, architecture, weapons, uh, ships, which are... <laughs> Also a lot of work. I'll be posting updates on our social media, but members of the site will get to see extra behind the scenes and um, content before anyone else. Stuff like this. I'll give you a sneak peek.
So these are the uh, rock golems that are called uh, geocores. So heart of rock, basically, translated from uh, Latin. So lately I've been very hard at work promoting Rebels Unite so that it can help us, among other things, uh, pay for the artists who will be helping out drawing the art from Multiverse Cosmic Conquest. It's been tough. In fact, uh, I've had to take another job as a pixel artist for the game Towards the Pantheon, which if you've been following uh, my latest work, you've probably already noticed that I've been working on, on this new game. Uh, I've been doing it just in order to help fund Multiverse, and it won't be nearly enough, though, uh, to fund the entire game. Uh, and we're planning on launching a Kickstarter campaign in February of 2017. So if you like the game, if you play it uh, in this open beta version, and if you're enjoying it, an Octagon consider pledging and supporting us on Kickstarter. And with your help, we'll be able to make Multiverse Cosmic Conquest the best game it can possibly be. So with that said, I'll see you guys soon, and there are a lot of worlds waiting to be designed. Uh, so keep an eye for updates, and um, until next time, keep it up.